Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. After viewing the Flame Family Primer, let's break out some of the typical workflows you would use in the Flame products. Starting off with a desktop-centric workflow. This is the classic working style for Flame and Flare artists. So you've been given a shot and you need to do some creative work on it. You import, create, render and export. However, if you're coming from a different application, things are very different from what you're used to. So let's rewind to the beginning and run through the workflow to ensure that you don't miss anything. To get any media into the workspace, we'll start off in the Media Hub area. You can click the tab or press space F1 to see the Media Hub area. The Media panel manages your media on the left and you browse your file system through the browser on the right. Navigate to your media using the file browser. Now you can import a single clip, select multiple clips with control or just drag and drop folders to import them into the Flame products. You can import media into any section of the workspace, but importing into the libraries is the preferred method. This allows you to properly store and organize the media without affecting the active desktop. Importing into the active desktop is supported, but then you have no safety copy of your media in the libraries until you save the active desktop. So I'll drag this shot and drop it into the default library. So this is where the original clip will reside and you could create folders and organize it. When working in any of the Flame products, I suggest pressing Ctrl S to save the project once every so often. There is an auto save every 15 minutes by default, but there is no better feeling than intentionally saving your work. Now let's load the media into the working areas. Since this is a shot based workflow, we recommend using a batch group and its schematic reels. This means you can easily move between reels and batch and you are always working with the same media. Just drag a clip, multiple clips or folder to a batch schematic reel and a copy of the media is created. The copy of the clip is created intentionally to ensure that you always have the untouched original safely in the libraries. Now if you're using Flame or Flame Assist, you have access to the Tools area. Just switch to the Tools area or press Space F5. For Flare artists, you only have the Batch Node compositing environment which will come to shortly. If you don't see the corresponding reels for the Batch group, just enable the eye icon next to the Batch group name. Please note that viewing the reels in this representation is exclusive to Flame. Flame Assist will just display the clips in a floating freeform view. So for one-off operations, the tools area and the displayed reels are pretty straightforward. All the tools are organized in logical menus to help organize the tools. For example, if you wish to copy audio between clips, you would switch to Utilities. Click Copy slash Duplicate, choose Audio as your option and then you can decide to overwrite or append the audio between clips. Please be advised that this is a gestural way of performing an operation but it could also be done using a timeline view. So you can use the individual tools to iterate your work by creating a new rendered clip per operation. Now at this point, it is good to point out that any results you create are sitting in an unsaved desktop. You could easily clear the desktop and lose work. So Control S saves the project's state but not the active desktop and its components into the library. To save this desktop, you go to the bottom right of the screen. You can change the desktop name in the media panel or here. Now click the Save button. This will save a copy of the desktop containing all the batch groups, reels groups, media and setups to the library. To identify a saved desktop, its icon consists of a folder with a film reel. By default, it saves the desktop to the root of the main library. 
The save destination is indicated by this yellow arrow icon. But you can easily create new libraries and folders and change the save destination through the contextual menu. So whatever you do to the current desktop, you can be assured that you have a previously saved version in your library. If you save the desktop again to the same location with the same name, you will be prompted with a list of options. Simply put, you can rename, replace or add another desktop into the save destination. Please note that you could also drag the desktop or components of the desktop into the library to save them. Just remember to press Ctrl S to save the project state if you work gesturally. To quickly switch between different desktops, you can drag one desktop over the existing one in the media panel or drag a desktop into the reels. This performs the same operation. A great point is that switching desktops is undoable in case you overwrote a desktop without saving it first. Now the desktop facilitates all types of workflows but you choose your work areas depending on the task. So remember earlier in the video that I said it's a good idea to load the media into a schematic reel of the batch group for shot based work. This means that when you switch to batch all the same media will be available as source media nodes. Depending on which area you are working in the same media will be displayed in a different way. So in the timeline area media is displayed as frames on a reel or segments in a timeline. In the batch area the media is displayed as source media nodes for node based compositing. Looking at the media panel everything is still the same. We are just viewing media in a different way depending on the task. To add additional clips into the current batch group you can drag clips around the media panel or drag clips directly into the batch schematic. You can drag one or multiple clips into batch. However I need to point out that when dragging directly from the library you make a copy of the source clip. If you drag between different reels groups or batch groups you will move the clip and not create a copy by default. If you want to copy clips between work areas hold down the pen button and drag. Or press the Shift Alt keyboard shortcut to create a copy of the media as you drag it. Now here is an organizational tip. The flow graph is a flat representation of your media and the composite. However you can organize your media in different batch schematic reels through the media panel. For example live action in one reel, CGI in another reel and graphics in its own reel. So the media panel can be used for storing and organizing your media within various levels and various work areas. But please bear in mind that you might not want to see the media panel when focusing on a task. So hold control and swipe either to the left or to the right to hide or reveal the media panel on demand. This just gives you extra screen space which is always welcome. Now hold T and click on the source clip to set the batch duration. I don't want to spend time making the effect in front of you. We'll look at these tools in other videos. So I'll speed things up a bit and drag out a setup I made earlier. I'll just connect the output of this clip into the MUX node. So what we have is our original shot and I would like to remove the crane, add a title and composite it behind the famous London Eye. Going through the node tree I've performed the various processes and built a compositing pipeline with the nodes. Everyday stuff. Now one advantage of using batch in flame or flare is that you can iterate your work as it develops. This means you can freeze or snapshot the setup at a certain point in time. And it also saves all the associated media in the iteration. To iterate a composite click the iterate button. If you click the drop down arrow next to iterate you will see a version 1 iteration. Now let's make an easy change to the flow graph. If you click iterate again 
you will be prompted to increment or replace the last iteration. Click Increment. In the drop-down menu, you will see a version 1 and version 2. Clicking between them allows you to move between iterations. You can also show or hide the iterations in the Media panel via the contextual menu. Through drag and drop, you can replace or append the iteration to the existing flow graph. So it's extremely flexible for decision making and creative development. The iterations are kept within the batch group. But to save the current batch group and the iterations, you need to save it into the libraries. There is also a Load and Save button to save an external setup file of the flow graph. However, it is not as complete as an iteration. It's just the nodes and settings without media. Now let's finish this desktop centric workflow. In the IO Nodes bin, you will locate the Render node. Drag that out and connect it into the pipeline. You can have as many render nodes as you want connected into different areas of the node tree if required. Now go to the Render Basic menu to adjust some of the render settings. Just so that you know, Batch always works in 16 bit float and does not clamp out of range data in the pipeline. I want to match the metadata settings of the original source clip. So hold T and click on the original source clip to copy the metadata to the upcoming render. So in this case, I'll also set the bit depth to 10 bit. In terms of the render destination, the default setting is to render to a reel called Batch Renders within the batch group. So the setup, iterations and renders are all contained within the batch group. Or you could send the render to a different Reels group or back to the library. You make these decisions depending on how you like to work. Now to verify everything, you switch to the render list. This gives you all the details with regards to the render. If you decide to change the name of the rendered clip, double click on the name entry. You can either enter in your own details or use the token naming system to create a very specific naming convention. Alternatively, if you just want to copy the name of the original source clip, ensure the render node is selected. Hold N and click on the source clip. The original name will copy to the render node and you could still modify this if desired. As a reminder, you can iterate the batch setup to save a new version before or after your render. Now press Render to process your work. So I rendered into the Batch Renders reel of the batch group. You can now select the clip and go to the player to play back the result. Once you are satisfied with the output, you can exit the player. If you switch to the Tools area or press Space F5, you will see the Reels representation of the Schematic Reels and Batch Render Reel from the Batch group. Please remember that even though you have created iterations as well as a rendered clip in the Batch group, the current active desktop still needs to be saved to the library. Click the Save button and either replace, rename or add the desktop to the library. You can now export your work through the Media Hub as a file or output to VTR. And if you have multiple clips to export, you can just multi-select the clips with control and drag them to their folder location in the file browser to bring up the export window. So that's a desktop-centric workflow with some foundations thrown in. Coming soon, we'll start looking at various story-centric workflows. You'll see how you can fit your finishing tasks in the context of a sequence timeline and more. This will be more applicable to Flame and Flame Assist. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.